Hey everyone, I know it's been a little while since I've done a video. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am the co founder and one of the executive board members of a nonprofit here in Wisconsin called the Wisconsin Games Alliance. Um, it's a nonprofit center for excellence for game development in tangential sectors. We put on an annual game development conference every year called MDEV. That just ended a couple days ago. So that's been taking up a lot of my spare time here. Um, I think I mentioned this a couple times before, but these videos are typically um, done in my spare time. This is not my full-time job. Um, I don't really make a lot of money out of it. It's more to help all you guys than anything else. Um, so I kind of have to fit them in where I can. So apologize for my absence, though. Uh, I'm going to try to be a little bit more regular about doing videos more, you know, regularly in the future. So. Without further ado, uh, we're going to get back to it here. We're, today I'm going to be doing a review for the uh, environmental art asset, uh, the Egyptian Tombs with Pyramid. This asset retails for $19.99 USD. Uh, as far as my you know, rating qualifications, I've gone over that in the past. I look at quality. It's a pass-fail. It's either good or bad, in my opinion. Um, I don't try to do subjective number ratings, but as far as the quality is concerned, it passes that. Modular and workability, it passes. There are a couple of um, caveats I have about that, but we'll get into that when we go through the actual uh, demo scenes and stuff. Um, support and serviceability, I, I haven't had any problems. I have reached out to this developer in the past over other things, and they've been responsive, so that one also is a pass. Um, and then the value, I think for 1999, uh, you get a lot out of this particular asset. So I do think that the value is in fact worth it. Um, so let's go over here and let's look at, so there's a couple of demo scenes that they have. We're going to go through, um, I'm going to do a fly through on this demo scene. This is the external of the pyramid. Um, and then after that, we're going to go into the tomb, the tomb scene down here, which I have my favorite character controller pumped into there already. And we'll just do a quick run through on that. And I'll explain some of the areas that I tend to like um, about that. Uh, there are some sound effects that and environmental effects they have out here. I don't have the character controller in here, but they're kind of just extra. That's not, in my opinion, the big part of this. Um, there are a few rocks. These rocks are decently detailed. Um, I I personally would have liked to have seen a few more rocks. I think there's only three prefabs for rocks. But I think what you can do with these rocks, in my opinion, is pretty decent. One of my big critiques or criticisms of this asset is that this pyramid is all one standard non-interior, non-modularized uh, mesh. I don't like that. I would have preferred to have seen the exterior pieces like these cross sections, um, maybe even chunk them out, but those to be modular so I could personally build <laughs> as big or small of a pyramid as I wanted. Um, that's my big, that's one of my only real big criticisms of this particular asset. There's another thing uh, that I already kind of touched on and that's you know, I kind of touched on with the rocks, but I'll show a little bit more when we go into the tomb scene. But there's also a slight lack of clutter. Um, I would have liked to have seen more clutter. I mean, if, if, if you've watched my previous videos, you know how, how much I like my clutter when it comes to uh, doing level design and stuff and buying asset packages. This doesn't have that. For $19.99, I don't think it's the end of the world, but that's one thing I, I would have, in fact, liked to see. Um, let's go into the tomb scene right away. I'm going to push play here. So first thing you'll notice is that there is audio and it is spatial audio. So as you get closer to some of this stuff, um, you're going to start to hear it more. This is my, this is my favored controller asset. As you could just see, I did the whole sliding and stuff there. All of that just works out of the box. I didn't have to do any um, tweaking or anything to the level to make the uh, sliding or any of that work. Or as you'll see in a minute, I can also do the wall runs. Um, that also is not uh, 
something that I had to modify at all. So, um, oops, not that here, this guy. So there's like three, maybe four, I can't remember off the top of my head, but we'll go into in the overview scene, um, level clutters like this, little like vases and, and there's some statues that you'll see in a little bit. Um, and then these pillars, which you saw outside, and then these sorts of little flames. These are all the same. And I get it to a certain degree. Uh, in, like, ancient pyramids, you kind of had a lot of symmetry and stuff like that. Um, so, again, I get that. But So this is a different variant of that, of that base that was out there. you got the statues here. Um, I just would have liked to have seen more of those more clutter like that if I'm being entirely honest um again I'm not going to hammer on that too hard because it's 1999 and for the price I do think that it is it is worth it um but again if you've watched my previous videos then you know how how much I like my clutter so it's a little hard to see in here but so there is uh if you saw this I don't have, you know, these triggered to kill me or anything. But when I walk through the door, there's a collider that automatically closed the door behind me, and this trap started. Um, so, and you're going to see that further up as well. Um, I didn't do any modifications <laughs> to this scene other than dumping my character controller in. Those sorts of things, those sorts of attention to detail on an art uh, uh, art asset developers part, those things I really like to see because it means I can just, if I want to prototype out a level real quick or whatever, I can just dump the asset in and go. Um, in some of the other um, our, uh, environmental assets that I have in the pipeline that I'm going to be doing, you'll see that if they have triggers for opening, you know, doors in, inside of colliders and stuff, there was some modification that I had to do with those assets. This one, it just works right out the door perfectly. Um, so it's going to happen again up here when I go uh, to one of these rooms. Maybe, maybe it's this one. So that door just closed behind me. This one's going to open. And you're going to see up there where there's, see how it's differently colored, um, spikes are going to start to come up real quick. This is a good opportunity. So these are different um, pillars and different uh, torches, obviously. Let's just do this real quick. So obviously all of the wall running and stuff also just works out 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 of the package. All of the vaulting and stuff like that, it just it just works. I didn't have to again modify anything. So when I go over here, when I start stepping these, you're gonna see a spikes come up. Again, all just done. Oh that one doesn't want to trigger. Oh, that's right, because they set up certain spikes to not go up. But, um, yeah, they all just trigger when you walk on the colliders, and I can show that in a second. But then you've got a different statue. I think this one's Anubis. I don't know all the Egyptian statues, or all the Egyptian gods. But um, So there's a couple of different statues, a couple of variants of that, a couple of variants of the torches, a couple of variants of the pillars, a couple of variants of the vases here. Um, do this too, obviously. This still works too. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's this asset, and let's pop out here, let's go all the way here, because I think if memory serves, not all of these have colliders on them, yeah, so not all of them have colliders on them, when I, uh, so all you have to do is to make it so it doesn't trigger is just remove that collider, it's the same thing uh back here you can uh where was it where was it somewhere down here it's these guys no yeah, it's gotta be these guys here um, one of these ones i can't find it right now here we'll do this um there we go ah there it is so yeah so so realistically you could like you know, move these guys around. You could disable some of these if you want to set up a more complex trap and then leave like a little note ahead, like ahead for your game. If you want to be like, oh, well, if you follow this, like, you know, letter shape or 
whatever the case is, you'll avoid the spike sort of thing. Um, so in that regard, it is very modularized as well. They they made it pretty um, pretty straightforward. Uh, the only thing you really have to connect is a you know kill script essentially. Um, so let's go back into the overview, or let's go into the overview rather. We haven't been here yet. And let's just look at everything here. Um, I appreciate how they kept it pretty simple too. Um, I do feel like the the availability for um, for these assets uh, and what and how to sort of uh, combine them together to make unique internal environments. I appreciate that. Um, I definitely uh, appreciate the fact that they gave higher, you know, walls, lower walls. That gives you as a designer more ability to work with some of that stuff. Um, the one thing I do wish they would have done a little different is to have at least one floor piece that has a bottom, um, about the only, th or one standard floor piece. The only thing you have is this guy that has a bottom floor, uh, bottom piece, but this one is meant specifically for um, the, the spikes. But honestly, you could decouple that and kind of work with that as well. Um, uh, so I don't know. I, I, that's one, that's like, I guess my only other real gripe, but as you can, yeah, so three rocks, you've got the two different variants of the statues. You got the two different, or I guess technically a few different variants of pillars. So there's the two for internal and then two for external, uh, two different torches. Um, and then you've got a couple of different walls and stuff that they didn't really, that you couldn't really see in the other one. Um, but all in all, I think the amount of stuff that you get, uh, in here for 20 bucks is, is worthwhile. So, um, yeah, so here's that pit trap. Uh, realistically, I think you can, you can decouple this. Um, if you really, yeah, if you really wanted to, the thing to point out in this one though, too, is that you see how it says it's destructible. So this wasn't in the demo scene, but this is designed in a way where if you walk on those, <clears throat> excuse me, those triggers um, or those colliders rather, it's going to make that part of the collider just <clears throat> fall apart. So what's cool about that is you could uh, realistically use that as a wall and set that up as like a destructible wall. The logic is all in there, so you could apply that to other, you know, elements as well. But um, I think if you were to just remove the script or, hmm, I don't know, I'd have to play with that. Point is, you could decouple that and use it as a, um, as a, you know, bottom wall, so, you know, or a, a floor rather, a floor that has a bottom, but it's, it's going to take some extra modification. So with that, uh, I'm going to cut this one. Um, I guess my final thoughts on it are, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth the money. Uh, again, 20 bucks for a decent amount of, um, you know, pyramid interiors, I think is worth, again, I think it's worth 20 bucks. Um, if they had been asking for more, I, I'd probably have a little bit more of an issue with it. But all in all, I think it's a, I think it's a decent, um, um, uh, a decent asset. And by the way, you could also, uh, where is it here? You could also make your own primitive and just slap one of these materials on if you needed, you know, a floor. Um, but yeah, anyways, I think it's a decent asset. I think it's worth the money. Um, I would suggest checking their assets, checking this asset out and their other assets. I'll have a link to the description or I'll have a link to the asset in the description. Uh, I'll also put links to that nonprofit I mentioned at the top of the video. If you, you know, live in the Midwest, I suggest coming in and checking this out one year. Uh, it's a really good organization. Um, we're just trying to make game development better for everybody in, in the Midwest. So, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see everybody in the next video.